Hi everyone and welcome to this course. My name is Ron Zaharsky. I'm the instructor for the course and in a sense a fellow student. You see I've been doing research in AI and machine learning since the early 1990s. In 2015 I wrote a textbook called A Programmer's Guide to Data Mining, The Ancient Art of the Numerati. And as you can imagine, well even the programming languages, the programming languages, the algorithms, the approaches I used in 1990 were drastically different than those I used in 2015. And what we use today is drastically different than what occurred in 2015. So not only did the techniques change, but the performance of these systems have changed as well. So if you look at the performance of a chat system in 2013 and compare that with chat GPT today, there's no comparison, right? The improvement has been exponential. And if we consider what's going to happen in the next 12 or 18 months, it's going to make the chat GPT, generative AI, and all the other systems we have look primitive by comparison. So this course is called Machine Learning Fundamentals for Data Mining. And these fields like data mining, data science, machine learning, and AI, they're not synonymous fields, but there's substantial overlap among them, particularly in the realm of machine learning and AI, as we'll see. Let's just take a look at the definition of machine learning, and that involves systems that improve with experience, right? A program improves its performance on some task with experience. So first, let's look at an example of something that's not machine learning. And let's look at a simple example of tic-tac-toe. So here I have a tic-tac-toe board, and you can imagine writing in our favorite programming language, whatever that is, an if-then-else rules to cover all the game maneuvers. So if we have if only one occurrence of x and it's in 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, or 8, then we'll put an O in 9. Right? And we continue writing rules like that. So as the game progresses, we might have we did, they moved in 1, position 1. We put an O in 9, and now they put an o, uh, x in 3. So we can have a rule like if x in 1 and 3 and 0 in 9 or O in 9, then put an O in 2. And the important thing to think of is that this is not machine learning because the system doesn't improve its performance with experience. So the more games it plays, it's not improving. An example of where it would be machine learning would be that if a person goes in X and now the system has to decide where to go and it thinks, well, I'll give it a shot to go in 2, I'll put an O in 2, and it learns after repeated games that he's going to lose if he always puts an O and 2. So now we can have a program that improves performance with experience, and we're going to learn to write programs like this. In fact, this is the major focus of this course, writing programs that learn from experience. And you may wonder what these machine learning programs can do or what tasks can they perform. And when you hear the term AI today, it's those set of tasks that involve machine learning. One set of tasks is called classification and prediction. And in these tasks, we're given a set of features, and we have the system predict a label. So the features might be some medical test results. So we have a patient. Here are the test results of all the lab work and scans or whatever it is. And the label, the, what we want the system, the machine learning system to do, is make some sort of diagnosis. Or we might have a set of features of demographic information about a particular person, their race, gender, salary, and so on. And we'd like to know, well, should we send some targeted advertising toward this person? So we'd like to label, is this a potential Tesla owner or not? Another recent example is this machine learning system that determines who to target for bombing. The Israeli army is using this system. Not a very ethical system, but it's a machine learning system nonetheless. So the features are such things as cellular information about a particular person, social media, phone contacts. They, do they change their address frequently? So those are the features. And the label, unfortunately, is this a person to bomb or not? A more pleasant one to move to would be if we had a phone app that could we give it a we aim the camera at a flower so it snaps a picture so the features here are the pixels the the values of the pixels of the image and the label we want to put is what kind of flower is this so there are systems like this and they're not 100% reliable as this article says using ai to spot edible mushrooms could kill you 
Another system that's more accurate than humans is a system where the features are MRI scans and the labels are whether this person has breast cancer or not. So that's a pretty impressive feature that has a higher performance rate than medical doctors. Given a set of features, these features could be the pixels of an image and an image recognition. Not only do we want to recognize the objects in the image, in this case, my dog who's training in training to be a service dog and some people, and it's not only recognizing the objects there, but it's putting a bounding box around them, so isolating them, finding where they are in the image. Here's a better example of that, just a complex traffic scene. We can go one step further and have what's called image segmentation. The features are the individual pixels of the image and the labels. What we're going to do is label each individual pixel as belonging to a particular object. So, right, we have all the people. Each individual person is all the pixels of that person are in green in this example. So that's classification and prediction, a big category of tasks that machine learning programs can do. And just to repeat ourselves, we're given a set of features. Can we predict a label? Another set of tasks involve, we know this one just from popular press, generative AI. So systems like ChatGPT, Google Gemini, deep fakes, generative music, you name it, there's quite a host of them. Here I've asked, um, one of the photo programs to generate photos of a cross between a horse and a poodle, and it did an okay job. So this is generative AI, but really it's machine learning, right? It's learning from experience. Initially, these, these were pretty bad, but after given many, many images, it can start, in, in ChatGPT case, given all the text of the web and all these books that were published and scanning all this information, it can start being a reasonable chatbot. So we had a category of classification systems, a category of generative AI, and a third one might be reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning involves learning by trial and error. And here's an example of that. <laughs> So the features here in this example are the sensors, right? The, this little bot gets sensory information, and the what it's trying to do is decide what to do with its actuators, what its different limbs, and the performance measure, whether it's to help it improve or not, is how close it is to reaching point B. And I should point out that this video is pretty old. It's like five years old, so the systems, the reinforcement systems of today are way advanced compared to this. This is just an entertaining 
uh, video of a system like this. And there are a number of reinforcement systems that can play games, learn to play games, and do a whole variety of tasks. So these are all branches of machine learning, classification and prediction, generative AI, and finally reinforcement learning. So we've heard this term artificial intelligence or AI, and that is the science of making machines that can think like humans. And it's everything I talked about, right? We've there's one even has the term generative AI, or we looked at that system, the Israeli system, it was called an AI system. So machine learning and AI are near synonymous. What differs is if there's an artificial intelligence system that doesn't learn from experience. So an example of this was IBM's Deep Blue. It's a hard-coded chess playing program built in the 1990s. It was the first computer to win and beat a world champion. It won a six-game match in 1997. And it was built by computer programmers interviewing chess ex human chess experts. So, and it wasn't any better at playing game five than it was at playing game one. Right? It was all hard-coded information. Another example of hard-coded AI would be Tesla's full self-driving software, right? Initially, as this play says, initially, as this says, it was a 300,000 lines explicit C++ code, meaning that people wrote rules. And now it was re it's been replaced by machine, a machine learning system, this uh, single end-to-end -end neural network trained on millions of video clips. We're going to learn to do this, not full self-driving car, but we're going to learn how to write these neural network programs. So that's AI, and you can see, other than these few examples, it's synonymous or the same approach as machine learning. Finally, data mining. And data mining, this definition is from a well-known textbook in data mining, Data mining, also known as knowledge discovery in data, is the process of uncovering patterns and other valuable information from large data sets. So nearly everything I talked about before can be considered a branch of data mining, particularly classification and prediction. And as these quotes from other data mining textbooks says, data mining tasks are divided into two main categories, predictive tasks, the classification and prediction examples I gave before, and descriptive tasks, which I didn't talk about, but we're going to work on in this class, which involves discovering patterns in the data. And all these, according to these textbooks, involve machine learning methods. Just to emphasize that I'm not the one saying this, but everyone in the field believes that data mining uses machine learning methods. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll be using machine learning methods. Specifically, we will be writing programs that learn from experience. So it's a hands-on, programming-intensive course. And let me now briefly talk about the software stack. First off, we'll be using the language Python. The prerequisite for the course is that you're either fluent in some other programming language and can easily pick up Python or learn Python, or maybe you even have some Python in programming in your background. And on top of that, we'll be using a number of machine learning specific libraries. Here's the stack on one side. So NumPy is an open source library for scientific computing, particularly in handling multidimensional arrays. Pandas is an open source data analysis library. And on top of that, there's scikit-learn, which is a library that implements many of the machine learning algorithms we'll be using one in particular, a very high performing machine learning library or machine learning algorithm is XGBoost, and we'll be using a library related to that as well. On the deep learning side, we'll be using TensorFlow, which is a free and open source library developed by Google Brain for machine learning. Its kind of competitor would be PyTorch, developed by Meta. So we're sticking with TensorFlow, and it's a little bit of a challenge to get started in TensorFlow, so we'll be using a user-friendly interface to it called Keras. So that's the software stack we'll be using. So that's it. We'll be building machines that can learn. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.